Hello, everyone. I'm White Cow. Nice to meet you. Today, we will install Arrows OS, a web desktop OS. The main feature of Arrows OS is that it is a browser based operating system. Here is what the actual screen looks like. At first glance, it might look like a remote desktop, but it's different because the installed OS is a C UI based Linux. By installing Arrows OS, you will be able to perform GUI operations such as file transfer and multimedia. All the features explained in the video have been experienced by myself. It's also a great advantage that it's open source and can be installed relatively easily. Moreover, by installing Arrows OS, file sharing and transfer programs, as well as other tools, can be implemented without the need for separate installations on the OS itself. Now, let's go ahead and install Arrows OS. We will proceed by referring to the official Arrows page or GitHub. Today, I will install it on a command line based Ubuntu, but it seems there is also a version for Windows. For those who want to install it on Windows, using VirtualBox might be a good option. I will explain this method later. First, we need to install the Go language, which is required for installing Arrows OS. Go language is considered very convenient in modern software development due to its simplicity, fast execution, and ease of parallel processing. In particular, it is widely used in areas such as web services, cloud-based applications, and microservices. I will obtain the download link for the Linux version of the file. Since the screen of the computer I am installing it on is difficult to see, I will install it via an SSH connection. This computer originally had Windows 7 pre-installed, but I have just installed an Ubuntu server on it. The memory size is 4 GB, which is sufficient for its operation. Now, I will download the binary file for the Go language. I will unzip and install the downloaded Go language archive. The commands and their detailed meanings will be listed in the link provided in the video description. Since this command specifies the destination for unzipping, I will double check it just to be sure. At shell startup, I will add the path of the Go language executable to the environment variables. I will load the modified file to reflect the changes in the current shell session. This completes the installation. Now, I will display the version of the installed Go language. Since the downloaded file is no longer needed, I will delete it. Installing the OS involves a series of steps where you clone the project's source code, build it, and then execute it. I will copy the source code from a repository on GitHub. The download may take a while as the size is over 1 gigabyte. I will use the cd command to move to the src folder inside the cloned repository. In the directory containing the source code for this build, I will organize the project's dependencies and download the necessary modules. Next, I'll compile the source code to create an executable binary file. With that complete, I will now launch the program. Now that the URL is displayed, I will access it through a browser. The new user registration screen has appeared. I will complete the registration process. Please wait for a moment. Once registered, I will log in with the account I just created. This is the screen after the initial logging. 
Let's try out what can be done. I'll open a file manager. It seems like file transfer is possible. But first, let's take a general look at the other feature. I will try transferring a file as a test. Using ARAS OS's features, the file will be sent and received from a Windows computer with a browser open to an Ubuntu computer. Since I've uploaded a music file, let's give it a listen. I will also check the file operations. Basic operations like copying, pasting, and moving are all available. In the video, I am deleting a file. Next, let's take a closer look at the system settings. What becomes clear upon actual operation is that the system runs smoothly. Although not shown in the video, basic applications such as text editors and paint software are included. Setting it up on a cloud service might make it more convenient to use. Also, the video contains information intended for developers and technicians. I tried accessing it from a smartphone, and it seems to be designed for that as well. There are still more features, but let's leave the settings as they are for now and move on. For those who want to use it as a file server, here's some good news. Depending on the file type, it's convenient that you can view them using Eros OSIS features without any special configuration. I will select the file transfer protocol to use, and in this case, I'll choose SFTP. This is because when the CP is installed on Windows, you can either paste the displayed address into a browser, or configure it directly in the software itself. Since I've managed to connect, I'll try transferring a file I will also check it in the browser.
When this file is viewed on Ubuntu, it appears as shown in the video. Since it can also be set up in VirtualBox, I'll introduce that method. I will install a lightweight Ubuntu server on VirtualBox. Then, I'll set up port forwarding. Once these preparations are complete, you can achieve the installation by following the previously mentioned method. This is definitely the virtual hard disk of VirtualBox. Lastly, let's access it using a smartphone and try uploading a file. Although it cannot be confirmed in the video, sound is coming out from the smartphone. With this, the music server is complete. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.